Hi everybody, welcome to the Commander Quarter Studio. I'm first rate magic player, Eric. And with me today is Eddie! Oh no, that's not right. Mitch! <laughs> <laughs> See, look, we decided to switch it up this time where Eric intros. Or Budget Rick Moranis? Budget Rick Moranis? That's what you're yeah, known as, yeah, yeah, as yeah. well? Yep. So, uh, Budget Rick Moranis slash uh, Eric slash uh, not Eddie. Uh, <laughs> what are we talking about on this episode? We're going to talk about art. Art! We're art. going to talk about art. Art! But not like the art episode where we made everybody mad by <laughs> we picking, only made half the people we, mad picking, about half the, thing. the art styles that we liked and didn't like yeah no we're gonna talk about um making proxies yeah which is alters. also gonna make some people mad yeah because some people are like proxies are bad you shouldn't play proxies yeah and i just don't listen to those people yeah well that, that's how they sound so yep. they're gonna be some in the comments below yep hi if you don't like proxies and you don't like alters and probably not for you yeah that proxies are kind of like if you're going to define like what the commander format's all about in one word, it's like casual, right? right. Welcoming, yeah. inviting. And all of a sudden it's like, no, you can't play proxies. That's no, that's not really inviting or casual or welcoming. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I'm totally cool with proxies as the, just the, the concept of them, yeah. you know, like the, just may, not, not wanting to go out and buy a second copy of, you know, the great henge sure. or whatever. Or a first copy, for that matter. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> first copy, yeah. But the way that I personally go around proxies is just kind of my own personal house rule, right? And everybody's got kind of their own, like, threshold of what oh, they're comfortable sure. with. And, and honestly, like, I don't we, – we've got friends within our playgroup that do proxies the entire deck, yeah. most of their deck, the, that are just printed off or yep. whatever. Totally cool. Yep. I don't – I have no issue with any of that stuff. Mm. For me, my personal rule of myself is – if I own the card, I'll and I don't want to buy. Usually, it's like above, like five bucks, sure, seven bucks. If I don't want to buy another version of that card, but I want it for a deck or to try it out for a deck, I'll proxy it. Mm -hmm. Um, and usually, I proxy it by upcycling an old card, not actually printing off a new one because I like to draw. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes just kind of this personal fun thing for me. So like, yeah. for instance, I've proxied, I didn't bring any of them today now that I'm mentioning it, but um, I'll send you some pictures of them, but I've proxied like demonic tutor mm. or smothering tithe. Yep. You know, I'm not going to go buy another copy of that. Yep. I don't have it in every deck. I also, sure. you know, I don't typically like to be like, Oh, I own one copy of this card. I'm going to proxy and put it in every, every single, single deck that decks. I can possibly go in because yeah. why not? Mm. Cause most of my decks are, Varying in power levels, right? Mm -hmm. But for the decks that want it, and I don't want to buy a second copy, I'll make a proxy. Yeah. Or an altar or whatever. Yeah. And I, I kind of personally have it. I find it really hard. I find it hard to believe that some people would argue against that just as a base level. Like, if someone already owns the card, it doesn't feel like taking it out of their other yeah. deck to then put in this deck. Like, they already have. Like, it's kind of hard to, for me to see the other side of that. Like, I'm trying, trying to stay open minded with that kind of stuff. But, like, it's hard for me to see the other side of that of like, oh, you shouldn't play with that because it's not the actual card. Right. Like, yeah. Like, I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't get the argument. Yeah. Like, um, a member of our play group, my mm -hmm. cousin Roy, he has, he actually owns one copy of Mana Crypt, mm -hmm. but it is the foil, uh, ec um, whatever the alternate art of the, during Ka um, Kaladesh. Sure. That's like several hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. He happened to pull one, put it immediately in like a glass case. In a separate room that is just for that right. card. There is nothing else in that room. Yeah. Yeah. But basically like he's obviously not going to play with that. Mm. And so he asked me to make him some proxies for a few of his decks because mm. he wanted to play that play that card. Oh, so, is that the link? Is that the link one? Oh, wait, no. It's no, not. that's uh, – so Eddie has – I made a, Eddie a, a proxy for Ancient Tomb. Ancient Tomb, that's <laughs> it, yeah. Which I've I, done that one. I knew a tap for two. I typically do proxies of cards that don't have a ton of text. Uh, I learned my lesson from our Stranger sense. Things episode yeah. where I had to shorthand a lot of That's the copy on the, understandable. on uh, the Mind Flayer. On my copy, yeah, on Mind Flayer, mine, yeah. Oh man, that was uh, that yeah, like that was a lot of little bitty that's, handwriting. That's a, that's a journey. Huh? Thank and you, you got to plan out. <clears throat> you got to plan out. Excuse me, uh, all those words. Well, it's like it's like uh, doing like it's like John Mulaney's bit about like you know the birthday sign that you make or whatever, right? And you start Big B, <laughs> <laughs> and you're like the first three letters are gigantic. And you're like, oh no, I have five letters left and no space. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, same thing. Um, 
Yeah, it's it's definitely something that I I don't like to I don't like uh, writing words. So for the most part, I proxy a lot of lands, like mm-hmm. you know, way uh, not wasteland, um, like ancient tomb things mm-hmm. like that, where you know what it does. Yeah, right? yeah. Or cards that are so ubiquitous that you know what they do. You don't even need to sure. remember it. Like, like for instance, like the I don't proxy it, but like the full art path to exile. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like well, you don't. You, everybody knows what that card does. Yeah. You know, or yeah, at yeah. least you know enough. Exile creature, people. you gain life, right? Yeah. No. Uh, no, it's the land. It's <laughs> yeah, the land. Basically. Yeah. <clears throat> Just try to test you. Test yeah. over the comments. Of course, you're below. trying to test me. Yeah. yeah. Swords, plowshares. Yeah. Same thing. So, that's kind of my personal like pro uh, a background on proxies and mm-hmm. you know how how I justify whether or not I want to do it or, or whatever. And it for me, it's a creative outlet. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, I I'm into art. I always have been. Went to art college, and um, so it's I, I don't do a lot of art. You know, just in my day to day life. Mm-hmm just too busy for it so this is like a, a kind of a little bit of an outlet for yeah, me it's it gives a, me a good, purpose to do it 100 percent. yeah mm-hmm. it's it's a good in between like kind of that brings in two hobbies kind of yeah, yeah yeah definitely so quick little psa then mm-hmm. on on like doing proxies if anybody mm-hmm. is watching this and they're interested in um my process how i do it mm-hmm. i'll get into that but just first and foremost there's a legal threshold around proxying mm. this is not something that you can go and make money at yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you you can make money at being an altruist yeah you're not out there selling proxy versions you can't of... sell proxy product that is a licensed entity of, a, of the game yeah you're not so, like oh, here's a guy's cradle but it's only for ten dollars and yeah. we're not advocating for that no like, that is certainly that is not what we're saying that's that's law breaking stuff. And that's that is like not the, at all. What that's we're like the about. the wizards' argument against proxies is like was like, well, it's destroying the economy of cards or whatever. Essentially, it's like th- that's not what the majority of people who are proxy are doing. Yeah, the I think vast the, majority. Yeah, and I think the vast majority of people would prefer to own their legit, their original card. Yeah. Um, this is just you know in these more casual formats because the other thing too, if you aren't aware, mm-hmm. in, in constructed formats and uh, like like um, like tournament formats. Yeah. You can't use the proxies. No, you can't use. You can't use alternate ver- ver- You can't just like yeah. You can't I don't use- even. Can you even use signed cards? I don't think so. Yeah, I think if there's any strong. sort of like, you know, it's got to be like. I could be very wrong on that, but I don't think you can. I yet. thought that was technically damaged, and you I can't think it's use technically damaged. damaged. Cards. I think that's technically correct. I could be wrong. Yeah, Let us know in the comments below. But yeah, yeah we don't play. I don't play, we don't play tournament formats. Yeah, but I, I think that that was yeah. something that I read. Anyways, so just a quick PSA. Yeah. Just be careful. If you're gonna do this, don't think you're gonna go start an Etsy store and you're gonna be selling these to you mm-hmm. know all your buddies. Which is why like a lot of people ask me like, can I commission you for a proxy or, or something like that? And typically, I I will do it in trade of a card, mm-hmm. you know, of, of like what I deem equal value. Sure. So it's like, or or I just give it to them. Yeah, yeah. Like if you're in my inner circle. You, you, I might show up to the commander night with a proxy for you for fun. Yeah. So, you know, like, because uh, again, it's just an outlet for me. Mm-hmm. Like I, if I, if I like it and I, like Eddie has an elf deck mm-hmm. I, and he, he really likes a legend of Zelda. So yeah. I made him the legend of Zelda, a yeah. uh, uh, little ancient tomb, a hundred percent for his deal and a, and a token of link, yeah. you know? So uh, yeah. Anyway, so it's a, it's a fun little outlet for me. So let's talk about, um, my process yeah um and just kind of things that i've learned uh in in how i i create them and do them and and all that stuff so for um so i do two two kinds of of proxying i do tokens and then i do um like actual cards that would be in the 99 Mm. um i do different processes for both um because tokens don't really require like converted mana cost and things like that so i I, what I've done um, more recently is I've we get these these like um, what are these? They're basically like placeholder cards yeah, yeah. for like limited, yep. where you can write you know like the backside of of a card or something like that. Mm. I think that's what they're for. I think so too. Um, there's a whole bunch of these. They they exist. So what I'll do is um, for tokens, just because like it's got a couple of lines. You can have a creature type. You can have what it is. Mm. Um, I just use it as that way. I don't have to blank a card. So. For um, tokens, I've started. This was more recently. I started Piggy. just like yeah, just doing like quick little sketch so tokens. Um, so this is a boar for uh, it's a pig. A deck that is it's a pig. It's a pig, <laughs> but it makes a two-two boar. What spell does that? Uh, it's the blue one that exiles uh, curse of swine. Yes. Yeah. So I, I realized 
I don't have any of those tokens. They're actually kind of yeah. hard to come by. Yeah. So I was like, I'm just gonna make some. Yep. Um, another one that I made uh, in that same vein. I'll take it out of the sleeve because this is a matte sleeve and it isn't gonna. Also, look try good. if you can send me the images. Yeah, I'll yeah. try to put them on the screen yep. too. Uh, a, a construct. I'm a Star Wars fan, <laughs> uh, and so uh, the gonk robot and it's for anybody so who's a star wars fan uh i made it into a star star construct that's for so a cute deck that needs a needs that token love it so that's that's kind of one method how i do this method is i'll take one of these cards to begin with just as is um and then i'll sketch with and i'll, I'll send you links to these products in case anybody wants to give give this a shot themselves but um the uh faber castell 4h uh, uh, pen, uh, pencil. This is, um, the the thing that I've learned throughout is, is that the harder the pencil for for this cardstock, mm -hmm. especially when you're going over, like it's got printing right yeah. here. So you need something that can go over it, but you also don't want something that can rub or smudge. That makes sense. So the thin line, the hard, the four H's is what I've found to work uh, really well for me and my drawing style. So I'll do yep. like a rough sketch of of what is going to be you know the art and the words and everything and then i come over top of it with um one of these and i grabbed a few these are micron um pigma microns mm -hmm. they're uh tech pens they they come in all sorts of sh sizes they, there's even like brush tips and different stuff what i like to use is i like to use or i start with the smallest and go up so um the zero zero five it's it's teeny tiny you gotta be really careful because you can actually break the nib mm -hmm. but basically i'll do like initial outline of that mm -hmm. and then i go thicker and then i go thicker and thicker and thicker from there to depending on how how much i want to do um for the for the details and mm -hmm. then eventually you, you get to that mm -hmm. um this little guy actually also i've started to try and use there's another faber castell um i just started using these they're they're white paint pens mm -hmm. um and i just did like some highlighting you would you would be able to see it but i doubt the camera can see it but i'll Let's see a little bit yeah yeah it's just little dots you know yeah. kind of highlights on the on the guy just add a, add a little detail a little pizzazz yeah so when it comes to tokens that's been at least my current way of doing it mm -hmm. um that i found is is quick um it's fun um there is another way that i've done tokens or a couple other ways that i've done tokens in the past um oh just, just a couple other ones so those are black and white. I've done ones that use color. Um, like I needed a dwarf berserker. So I did, That's cool. um, I have a Zada deck and it makes like An absurd amount of tokens, it just different kinds of tokens yeah, yeah. that I didn't plan on. And so I was like, and I want two of it, all of them mm. because, um, they can yeah, get, they one's can get tapped. One's tapped, yeah, one's whatever. tapped. Yeah. So like an elemental That's and I just did cool. like a little bit of color when when the card has printing on it and you're coloring over it um i've found that's generally problematic it can bleed and run um this cute little dwarf is kind of fun. oh my gosh hi a little, little pickaxe no nope, little pickaxe um so anyways those are uh so what i've done for the colors um i'll get to that in a second but basically I, i've done both ink and color mm -hmm. on that style um the other two styles that i've done for tokens I don't do this one uh, anymore just because it creates a thicker card. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you're and you're trying to cheat so you can like, I'm you know, trying like to cheat. touch so the top of your to, deck like, right. oh, I know what this is. So I, I guess it wouldn't be a token, but <laughs> right. <laughs> cheating with tokens, it's the next level. But I took one of these like um, a bunch of these like just throwaway ad cards, mm -hmm. and I um, I have a Scarab God deck that creates four four zombies right mm -hmm. of the card. So I thought it'd be really funny if they were Rob Zombies. I love that. So they make so that deck makes four four That's Rob incredible. Zombies. That's incredible. <laughs> For anybody who uh, is old enough to remember the Hellbilly Deluxe album, um, so this is just this printed out on a on a you know copier mm. and then cut and uh, I used a uh, just some sort of like I think spray adhesive and I just sure. put it down. So it's That's not crazy. quite as clean and nice as these ones it's, it's just a different token but a different method though. different method yeah so if you don't if, if you're not super artsy but you want to do mm. some some you know tokens or whatever just yeah. be aware you're putting you're putting the the, the thickness of whatever pr paper you're printing on mm. onto the card so this is thicker yeah so this isn't really a recommended format for um anything that you would do in your 99 yeah because the yeah. unless the entire deck has is like that because all the cards would need to be the same thickness. Yeah, technically. Technically speaking, to I mean, make people, a casual format, so to make people not be, get fussy. Uh, I'd know. say most commander players probably won't get fussy. No. But yeah, 
I always say if you can cheat in Commander mm. and 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 that is what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Okay, fine. You're probably in the wrong format. I know. Like <laughs> good good for you. That's weird. Why would you do that? But yeah. like if winning is that important mm-hmm. that you need to find a way to cheat. Yeah. Um and then the the last uh way that I've done tokens and this is more of an, just an alter um hopefully this doesn't offend anybody but i always uh, have this running joke um it's actually based on a pete holmes comedy sketch um uh so any one ones mm-hmm. one one tokens i always think it would be funny if their name was juan like one yeah yep a one one named juan there so I'll, I'll make a, a, a juan um so i've <laughs> i've got a vampire juan there you he's go. got a maraca instead of a sword and then I've got a, a, a goblin Juan. Um, so they're not exactly politically correct. My apologies. I'm not trying to be offensive to anybody. Um, but I just thought it was kind of funny and cute to do um, some like bandoliers of yeah, the shotgun Holmes, shells. Yeah, and kind stuff. of like homage. Yeah, the yeah. homage to Pete Holmes. If you haven't mm. seen that stand up bit, it's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, so those are the tokens that I've done. So these ones, by the way, uh, the, the wands are um, that's deco color paint pen Okay. over top. And yeah, you, I will put all the, if you send me links, I'll put them in the description below. Just so this is really, really hard to do and have it not, um, not get messy because I, paint pens just, they don't, it doesn't sit on the card very nicely because the you. cards are slick. Yeah. Um, so it's not ideal. That's just why I, I don't do these very often, sure. but they're kind of fun. Yeah. They're, a little, they're bold. They stand they're out. They're silly. They're mm-hmm. silly. So that's tokens. Um, when it comes to actual cards, I've gone all over the place. I've done the the kind of the Rob Zombie route where I've printed mm-hmm. pieces of paper. I didn't like how it made them thicker and I didn't want to proxy an entire deck. Mm-hmm. So um, I've then I started doing where you I, I would blank a card. And that's what I what I do now. That's what you did for the Stranger Things episode. For the Stranger Things, mm-hmm. yeah. And so one thing I learned um, just from my own process was there's the, the smaller things that um, – are on the card like numbers and words are really really hard to draw yourself makes sense so text boxes if i'm if i'm making a straight up proxy um i'll you know i can't get around the fact that i'll need to do my own text box but Mm -hmm. things like converted mana cost sure not having to draw like the magic symbol and stuff like that um i tend to find a card so like for instance if i want a card that let's say demonic tutor right Mm -hmm. so that's what one in a black black. so i'll find a card that's one in a black Mm -hmm to blank yep and i'll keep that little corner of it un- untouched will you keep the sorcery as well or like if it's a sorcery, if it's too, a would sorcery. You try to find a yeah like if oneness. it's a creature i obviously want to have like the little area for the, for yes. the you know power you try to you try to match the type as well as the yeah i try to i try to find cards that do the most amount of work for me on the co- on that collateral yeah. stuff or if it's a creature yeah the toughness power so if right. you can literally find a creature with the same type toughness power yep. and the same mana cost that's kind of ideal yep so when it comes to like blanking a card, um, I started out, you know, researching online and there's a lot out there around like using rubbing alcohols and things like that. Mm-hmm. Those typically damage the cards. Um, if it's a foil, you can, you can use rubbing alcohol. Um, for the most part, I haven't tried it out on like newer foils. I mm-hmm. just tend to not, not use foils cause it's just hard to draw on sure, that, that, on that material like slicker i would assume yeah and most i i think i do my my proxying and alters very, very different from like a lot of alterists that do a lot better job than i do you do an amazing um, job well thank you they but they typically use like uh paint acrylic paint um the problem that i well, or more of just my own laziness i didn't want to get you have to dilute the paint so mm-hmm. that it doesn't doesn't cause the cards to be that much thicker. That makes sense. So you have to actually dilute the paint. You gotta be really talented at doing that. Mm. And I, it was just an extra layer of learning that I just sure. didn't feel like doing. That makes sense. And I was never really like a very strong painter. Um, so I was like, I always like, like drawing markers are my thing. So mm. I went that route. Mm. So for blanking cards, um, I've stayed away from the rubbing alcohols. Those were basically a c- catastrophic failure the few times that I tried. Okay. Um, what I learned is, um, you can actually go ahead and blank a card with a simple, and I was dumb and I brought one that I've already used. So the, the words are off of it, but mm. this eraser is a Prismacolor, uh, Prismacolor magic rub vinyl eraser. That is crazy. That can blank a card. Um, what I learned with this mm. is 
I forget what set that um, the, that I found was like the cutoff, but I started going back through sets. So, so I realized like newer cards mm -hmm. were really hard to blink. They change up like the printing process or right. that, that they use. So I was like, it was, I want to say it was even like Dominaria. Oh really? And I was like, that was a there, different card stock. Yeah. Yeah. And I was sitting there like trying to erase um, the ink and it was, I mean, like I was getting like cramped up. Like it was yeah. just it, like my fingers anywhere. were completely raw from just the rubber material. Like, Tatiova, being... why won't you go away? Yeah, you're sitting yeah. there just like really trying <laughs> to dig out. in. And, and it, I was getting nowhere. So then I realized um, I went back, you know, through sets or whatever. Mm. And you don't have to go back too far. But I think like prior to like Journey into Nyx. Sure. Um, maybe even that block. You could you could blank the cards really easily, and mm. if you go way back yeah. to like old cards, super easy. And I get a little bit sketchy about it because I'm like, I feel like I'm like wrecking history. <laughs> well, I, you know, even what, if it's a crappy card, yeah, you did that with your Black Lotus. I'm like, it's like what are you doing? And you're like, well, I just want to make yeah, an old yeah. version of this. Right, yeah. <laughs> but it's like, even if it's just like a really bad card from like you know Ice Age, sure. I'm still like blanking a card that's you know like Hill only Giant, ever going to yeah. exist back there that's yeah. True, yeah but anyways I've, i don't know if Hill Giant's nice. i, I usually end up justifying it if um, i at least own one other of it sure sure, you know? sure. So i was like oh at least i got a copy uh -huh. of this really bad card it's really <laughs> that bad i'll never use uh-huh but it's nostalgic yeah. but those but those old cards man like you, you'd be amazed at how quick you can take off the the ink with them that's so crazy. what i do then is i use just painter's tape and uh, and I, I have a little. That makes clipboard. so much sense. I was gonna say, how do you get the detail? So so what you do is you just take painter's tape. Uh -huh. I'll just use this card as an example, and I'll just you know rip it. And painter's tape over on top of the, the things that you don't want up, it to. Yeah, around yeah. the framing. Um, you know, cross here if I just mm -hmm. am taking off the the top. Yep. You know, little b band, and then you gotta be kind of careful if you're gonna keep the the CMC up in the up in the corner sure, or whatever. Sure, sure. So you maybe put a little bit of tape right there, mm. and then yeah, you just take the take the ink off. Um, and then, uh, I usually leave, leave it taped to a clipboard so that mm -hmm. it doesn't, I don't have to worry about it moving while I draw. Mm -hmm. And then it's the same process. It's that 4H Faber-Castell, um, pencil. I'll sketch it, mm -hmm. uh, get it to where I want. Um, the eraser that I use for when I'm, it, when I'm sketching, um, and also when, once I've like done like the first line work with one of the microns. Mm -hmm. Um, there might, I might not, you know, there might be extra little, um, pencil lines, you know, and stuff that I want to take off. This is just a gum eraser. Mm -hmm. Um, you can get them on Amazon or at any like arts and crafts store. It's a self cleaning eraser. I've had this since college huh. and you basically like just basically take it and work it and fold it on and on itself. Magic. And the nice thing about this is you don't have to rub with it. Uh -huh. You can just stick and it'll pick it up. What? Yeah, as long as you haven't pushed too hard with the with the the four H pencil is a delicate pencil. Gotcha. Um, that is, I should have said that like, it it's a it's a light line, but always you know you can always go back over things, mm -hmm. um, but you don't want to go too hard right away because makes sense. Those are harder to take off, and you yeah. can dent the card. It's like a haircut, you know. You can't. Yeah. You don't want to go too far, you know. Cut down layers. too much hair. Yeah, you gotta yeah. you gotta go small you and then work take your it way off up. In layers. Yeah, exactly. If you if you go just big and go home, you can just lose all the hair that you wanted to keep on. Right. Yeah. yeah, can't put it back on. Can't put it back on. Mm -mm. Okay, but you can regrow it. You can't regrow magic cards. That's true. We have we have yet to learn. We that don't we don't have the technology. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so that's what I do for for blanking a card. That's mm. the current process. That I've found that to be the best, easiest way. Mm. Um, I've even asked like our play group, like, hey, anybody got like old jank cards that you're never gonna touch? Send them my way because I'll use them in proxies and I'll give you them. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. I use that um, for the sketching and the outlining, um, all the kind of detail lines. Um, for color, what I've found, so for the longest time I was terrified to try any sort of marker color. Mm. Um, so I was just doing just ink pen, um, which look fine, they look cool, but I wanted to start trying out color. I started trying out these, um, these are Copic, uh, Copic sketch pens. Mm. Um, I mean like, I, I saw like really good artists using these on like Instagram and I was like, Hey, what are those pens? Um, they're good with a caveat They're The one thing that you need to look for in markers when doing proxies on cardstock, um, is look for alcohol based. Okay. Water based is just going to run. Oh, okay. And it doesn't blend a bit, like thicker. It doesn't like blend eventually. well. So you got to find, um, alcohol based. Usually if you go to like a Michael's or, um, you know, whatever your local art store is, mm -hmm. they're usually locked up. 
Um, so that's a good indication that you're in the right place. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, just go looking for anything that's alcohol based. Mm -hmm. And then um, the problem that I ran into with these and why I don't use them very often or much at all anymore is they're really good for blending on certain paper stocks, but on magic cardstock, it's a very smooth cardstock because mm. it's been printed on and it's run through rollers and everything. So it's very, very smooth when mm. you take all the ink off of it that while you can blend with these, you can also take up the ink that was there. Oh, so it's kind of almost like watercolor at, at times where like if you've ever done watercolor, mm. if you do, if you add water to an area that has ink by accident, it yeah. can blow that ink like right spread out it, yeah, kind of thing, so and yeah. these can can do that um you basically have to make sure everything's really dry it's just it's a slower process you know it might take multiple sessions to actually mm -hmm. you know continuously be shading and when you're in the zone and you're having fun drawing or whatever you don't mm -hmm. really want to stop and take a break so Makes sense. i don't use those a ton anymore i still have some but i i don't use those a ton what i've found really are the bread and butter that i use a lot is um these are prismacolor um, they're just alcohol based Prismacolor premier, mm -hmm. uh, markers. You can get them with brush tips, um, wedges, and also, um, these are just like little nibs mm -hmm. most of them have two tips. So one ends a nib and the other one's a, a brush. broad. Yeah. Cool. Um, hardly ever need to use the broad, um, unless it's a lighter one. I have a set of grays. I recommend if you're going to go this route, get a set of grays mm -hmm. cause it goes all the way from 10% to a hundred percent. Um, and you will use those more than anything, mm -hmm. just being able to have shading. And then I also picked up, um, this is what the, what the box looks like. And I'll, I'll send you a link to this, sure. um, Prismacolor premiere. It's a set of, uh, I believe these are all supposed to be like, uh, manga, um, colors, sure. but there's a lot of good flesh tones and stuff in there. And mm -hmm. for the purposes of like a magic card, yep. um, they're, they look a little bit different, but it's just Prismacolor premiere. Mm -hmm. Um, same, same exact product. They're alcohol based. And those ones are really opaque um, when you like with anything that you're doing on this stuff, like with the drawing, mm -hmm. um, working light to dark mm -hmm. on your colors is key. So like, you know, um, I'll lay down even just like a wash of like 10% gray on the entire thing just to kind of have something there for the so other base. colors to, to, ba yeah, to base yeah, yeah. off of. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so anyways, you, but you can do like, you know, comic book style like opaque shading um with that with those markers there's a lot of really fun things you can do with them so that those are the color the the, the markers that i use mm -hmm. for my stuff and then i just brought this this is if you want to do uh any sort of uh wan-esque uh style things where you're mm -hmm. doing an alter on top of stuff um i really like crink um these are a little harder to come by you you can order them from a company called art primo uh based out of seattle um, but you can also get deco color. These are, these are basically like the same ink that's in spray paint. Oh, okay. so they're really, they're really potent smelling. So work in a ventilated area yep. or, you know, don't, don't work with them too long, mm -hmm. but, um, and you gotta, like gotta shake them, gotta sure. mix them, but they are, they are, uh, effective at doing like the wand style where, you know, the, the ink is just sitting on top mm -hmm. that will make the, the stuff raised though. So just be aware Got it. it's not going to be. You know, um, it'll be noticeable. So if you're looking to cheat, use crank essentially. Yeah, just mark your cards with mark like a your crank, cards exactly with a crank marker mm -hmm. or um, there's a bunch of companies. Basically, all the spray paint companies all have markers. Um, but yeah, so that's a, a kind of a, another option. Nice. Um, and then the last thing that I do usually with um, whether it's a token or um, a, a, an actual in the ninety nine proxy mm -hmm. is um, this is just Windsor and Newton. Um, it's sealant. Mm -hmm. um, do this outside. It's it's volatile. Area. It's volatile. It's yep. uh, but it is, um, like, I usually just wait till I have like a few few cards because mm. it, otherwise you're kind of wasting it. Yeah. Because it doesn't take much. Just spray across. So I lay them all out and I just kind of go chat 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 and then yep. it's it's done. Um, it'll get kind of this a little bit of a texture when it's um when it's done mm -hmm. and dry, but it dries really quick and then I usually leave it overnight just to mm -hmm. be sure and then I put it in a sleeve just so it doesn't like mess up the sleeve mm -hmm. or get sticky but it'll have like a little bit of a texture to it, but nothing that is like concerning to, I mean, you don't even notice it in a, yeah. in a sleeve. So yeah. And then basically I just seal them and, and, and call it a day and then move on to the next set of proxies. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So that's kind of the, the different things that I've tried out the, the pitfalls that I've tried out that, you know, I've, I've done this for a I was few gonna say, years. How many years have you been doing this now? Proxying. 
Probably not that many. I mm. think I started doing them um, before COVID. Mm -hmm. So like 2019, 2018. So like four, four or five years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't do a ton. It, mm. they, it's So if a lot of people think like, okay, you're, you're, you, you make your own proxies. You can just whip those up. That You know, like that's easy for you. I think whatever. they would take some time. <laughs> it actually, is, yeah. If you're doing like the, the printout style, that's obviously a, a, they can a, go a little quicker, a, a quicker way of yep. doing it. So if you're just trying to get some cards proxied, mm -hmm. this is more of a love letter to your magic cards, yep. right? Like you want to do something that's personal yeah. that you can, you've got this idea for a token mm -hmm. and you want to draw it or mm -hmm. whatever, or a gift for a friend or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it is very much. And it's why anybody who's ever a commissioned an altruist to mm -hmm. do a card, it's, not cheaper than going out and buying the card. Yeah, you know what well, I mean. Like, well, especially with the altars too, because you have to buy. They have to. They're using the actual card. Right. Too. So well, you yeah. Buy the card. Number one, number two. That's the time and the right. resources and the effort put on top of it. Yeah, and so it's like one of those things where it's like, value your artist, mm -hmm. right? And 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 that's a hard thing for a lot of people. That people don't really realize. Like, oh, you're just sketching, but it's like no, there's the there's time. time takes, yeah, you research uh, kind of uh, reference material. Mm -hmm. um, AI has actually been really fun because like. Um, I'll use it to come up with uh, um, drawing references. Oh, really? I didn't think about that. Yeah. So like one of the dwarves, uh, I was like, find me a cute dwarf, mm -hmm. you know, and, and at one, it, cause I wanted to find something that like mm -hmm. I hadn't seen before. And I think I even asked him to have like a little pickaxe, uh -huh. you know, gave him some parameters. Just came up stuff. with just Gimli to start off with. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> yeah. And so then like I, I did like my own little alter alterations based mm -hmm. on that. But um, other things that I've used for drawing references just on that topic, um, I've used other magic cards um, that I've liked, but I also, um, cause I got into this game mm. for the art. Like w we didn't know how to play when I was in like fourth, fifth grade. And my buddy had a pack of these cards and we just like to play or we just like to look at the cards and use them as drawing references. That's you all. Know? Yeah, I think you said there was a worm, I think. Scaled worm. Scale worm, that's it. Yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, I remember drawing that on like one of my notebooks or whatever in study hall or something. Mm -hmm. But um, so that's like, this is another reason why I like kind of reconnects me with, you know, the how I started. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, where was I going with that though? <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, you probably got distracted by my dog barking in the background. I did get, I did get, <laughs> get sorry. distracted by the dog barking. That late? <laughs> but um, no, so, so – like in in having all that like connection back to the game to mm. me like it makes my my decks a little more personal mm. that's why i like doing it um i like giving them to to friends as well i want to get to the point where i can make them i i think doing this proxy this this way is really quick mm -hmm. I, I mean relatively quick for, for you i mean but like, i can well, yeah. i can make i can make multiple in, yes. in a night and not be burnt out yep um I want to get to a point where I can like have a bunch of like boar tokens or mm. something that's like really common, like treasures sure. and be able to like sit down to at a pod of players that I don't, that maybe I, I haven't played with before. Mm. And it almost as like a, Hey, thanks for playing with me. Yeah. Like give them a card. Little memory. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Like just cause I feel like that would be kind of a fun thing to, to do. Just kind of hand, hand them out, have mm. the handout. Um, I have yet to get to that, that, level of, mm -hmm. of uh, so, production. So if you see budget Rick Moranis at an event, don't just come over demanding uh proxies. Yeah. That's a good way to not get one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I, I actually, uh, I brought a few, um, to command fest Minneapolis when we went there, mm -hmm. I gave a couple out cause I only had a, a, I didn't really plan for it and I only had sure. a couple, but I, yeah, there was a couple of good games that we had with some, yeah. some new friends. A lot of fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. To yeah. Do. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, Sheesh, thank you for this masterclass on proxies. <laughs> I don't my know about goodness. masterclass. But when you pulled out all these things, I was like, oh my gosh. You know, there's a lot of like tutorials out there. I would uh -huh. say do do research, find what, what you like to do. Again, yep. my roots are in markers and drawing. Yep. So I wanted to do something in the mediums that, that uh, I was most competent yeah, in. That feel natural to you, yeah. Yeah, and so I it was more around the blanking. The blanking mm. was the hardest thing to learn for me. So mm. honestly, straight up, if you got old cards especially, but these, these little... The Magic Rub mm -hmm. Prismacolor. Um, I'll, I'll I'll give you a link. Uh, yeah. To, to share. And, and don't don't. And you can buy like, a box of them. Yeah. Don't kill your arm trying to just do it on yeah. like Dominaria plus cards. So. <laughs> yeah, the newer cards. I mean, you can try, but like it, you'll, you can get there, but it'll. Mm -hmm. you're, you're gonna. It's a forearm workout for sure. Yeah, you have to go through three erasers. So. And you, yeah, and your fingers will become your. You will have no uh, thumbprints either. Oh, nice. So if you want to get rid of your fingerprints for yeah. whatever reason, we're not saying why. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you don't want to have fingerprints on just like your thumbs, yeah, you yeah. There you go. There, there you, you go. go. Perfect. All right. Yeah, Solutions. don't actually I just a side tangent onto that. I when I was doing like the the newer cards and I was like uh, rubbing my finger raw with yeah, the yeah. eraser. Um at the time the the iPhones Oh yeah. They yeah, had yeah. the thumbprint yep, yep. touch. It wouldn't recognize it then? I I always had to use my 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 passcode because it, it just locked you it out. It never let me That's in. That's hilarious. Yeah, anyway. Side. Speaking of that, now that it's the facial recognition, if you think if Rick Moranis stole your phone, he could just get in. I don't know. Yeah, well, we should find him. Find Rick Moranis and try and, that out. Or let's steal Rick Moranis's phone. There you go. <laughs> and you get into it. This seems very highly illegal. <laughs> We're just joking. Just in case, kidding. In case Rick Moranis is listening to this. Sorry, Rick. We're Famous, not a famously popular commander player. Yeah, exactly. We're <laughs> not trying to break into your phone. Yeah. No, yet just not yet. Not yet. <laughs> well yeah but thank you for this master class yeah, on proxying uh, again me uh, send me the links uh, and i'll include those in the description below so if you are interested in any of these uh, amazing things to, to utilize for proxying yeah go for it yeah drop in the comments if you've got any other little tips and tricks if you're if you're into this stuff and um or or just you know got questions too just post it absolutely all righty well thank you again yeah thanks man all righty and thank you everyone as always thanks again and blame eddie in the comments below again and thanks again and have a good one always blame eddie this show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you if you're looking for an easy way to help support this show make sure that you like share and subscribe also hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes you can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com we also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock so make sure you check out those as well Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.